The bringer of dreams and nightmares is high complexity for a good reason, and that reason entirely revolves around fear. You have to be creative in how you apply your powers because you can't kill anything, ever. When you would destroy something, you push it and you generate extra fear. What this means is that you're gonna need help keeping your board clean, and if you're playing solo, you're going to have to be very careful in how you position the invaders and how you control them to keep them from overwhelming you. This can, in and of itself, be tremendously strong if you're going for a fear victory, and if you have allies that can help you out with push mechanics like Ocean, it can be tremendously strong. Your starting position for Bringer is in the highest numbered sands, and what this means is that sometimes you'll start in a land with nothing at all, sometimes with the Han, and on at least one board, a land with invaders right there. So you're going to have to plan very carefully how you grow so that you don't end up stuck in the middle of a situation where you have no defenses, or so you can be effective fast enough to help your friends, or if you're playing solo, keep the land from blighting. The Bringer has four different growth options, and it's one of those spirits that gets to only pick one of them, so every turn you have to be very judicious about what you take. Do you get a new power card? Do you get presents? Or do you reclaim? It has a growth option that is place presence at range four, but only in a land with invaders uh, or Dahan. So if you're going to a place with people, you can go very far, which makes sense for something that inhabits dreams. And you have to use that one very, very carefully to either get into a place where you can do some immediate good or get across the board to some place where you're going to be able to push Dahan to do some good for you. The special rule that I want to touch on is its signature one to dream a thousand deaths. When a power of yours would destroy or deal enough damage to destroy invaders, uh, you generate fear instead. Uh, you generate zero, two, or five fear if it's for an explorer, town, or city, respectively. And then it pushes towns and explorers. This changes your play style immensely. You cannot just clear boards. You cannot get rid of things. You have to move things around. You have to shuffle them to places where other people can help you, or just keep moving them around the board and keep them from ever doing anything. And always, always, always rely on those fear cards. In terms of the starting cards, my favorite one is Call on Midnight's Dream. It can be a bread and butter card, it just gives you two fear, but if you're targeting a land with the Han, you can get a major power immediately. It's a zero cost card, so you can just pick up a major power turn one if you want. And if you forget uh, the Call on Midnight's Dream, you can gain energy equal to the Han there and immediately play the major power paying its cost. So if you like to gamble a little bit, you can just immediately bring the hammer down, although that's not always the best strategy. Endgame, it's all about massive, massive fear generation. It's not uncommon for the spirit to earn 13, 18, ri just ridiculous amounts of fear based on a single turn. And this is in part because while you can, of course, pick up cards like Paralyzing Fright, which just does some fear, you can also pick up cards like Talons of Lightning, where it does some fear and then does some damage. And if you've been building combos, you can do extra damage and destroy extra things. Talons of Lightning, for instance, as a fast action does three fear and five damage. That's enough to kill a city and a town, which means that you're getting three fear plus five fear for quote, killing a city plus another two fear for quote, killing a town. And if you get the kickers of three fire and three air, which is fairly easy to do with the spirit, you're also destroying a town in each adjacent land for two fear a pop. Like that adds up to some enormous amounts of fear. Just as a summary, Bringer's all about fear. I, I've been saying that a while because it's the truth. You've got a surprising amount of control with the push mechanics, and if you're playing with other people who can capitalize on that, you can do a surprising amount of fear generation on your own and still clear out your board. It's a great spirit once you get to know it. <laughs>